The atomic bombs that were dropped on Japan at the end of World War II were nicknamed Fat Man and Little Boy, and that's how they got the title of the new Paul Newman movie, which stars Newman as General Groves, the man in charge of reigning together a whole mixed bag of brilliant scientists, taking them down to New Mexico and governing their efforts to try to design and build America's first bomb. You are here to harness your God-given talent, your mind, your energy, in the practical pursuit of one thing, a military weapon, nuclear one, an atomic bomb. One of the biggest challenges for this no-nonsense general is to ride herd on the brilliant J. Robert Oppenheimer, the scientific head of the program. Ideas are community property. Free access to information is a matter of principle. You force my hand on this, and all right, you'll win. There won't be any free discussion because there won't be anybody left to have it. The movie goes into detail about how a city was built out of thin air in New Mexico to house all of these scientists and their families. I've got to stay in control, God. Got to control who gets this thing. Power and control, it's all I ever hear about anymore. Doesn't life matter to you? What about love and understanding? I thought that's what science was all about. The climax of the film, the day the first bomb was exploded on a test site. Some of the scientists thought it might destroy the entire Earth. You ought to stop playing God because the position is taken. It's a crisis, a crisis of conscience. You got one job, doctor. Give me the bomb. <laughs> Fat Man and Little Boy is disappointing for a bunch of reasons, and one of them is that there's really not that much of a serious conflict between the Paul Newman character, this general, and the scientist that he's in charge of. They're all really on the same side. Another problem is that some of the young scientists in the movie have been played by actors who are themselves so young that they look like kids in the high school play. It's just not credible. And still another problem is that everything leads up to this bomb explosion, and when it comes, it's sort of anticlimactic. It's not handled very well. I give this movie one and a half stars, and I'm Roger Ebert.